All right, welcome to a another H Civil War author interview. And today we have with us Jonathan Noyalis, who is the director of the McCormick Civil War Institute at Shenandoah Univ University, which is also his bachelor's alma mater. And he is that is located for those who are not as familiar with the Shenandoah Valley in Winchester, Virginia, um, to the upper part, top part of the Shenandoah Valley, not too far from Harper's Ferry for our John Brown familiar folks. Um, Jonathan is an extraordinarily accomplished writer. He has, by last count, on the Shenandoah University website, 11 books and claims to have 100 articles. I did not count. Um, <laughs> and the, the McCormick Institute is in part came into existence, it's just his office at the university, but it came into existence because they also have a battlefield that he's managing. And we'll, towards the end here today, talk a little about that and sort of um, how the material from the book kind of plays into the presentation of history in Winchester as a McCormick Institute and then the battlefield. And we're going to talk about the new book from the University of Florida Press on slavery in the Shenandoah Valley today. <clears throat> uh, so thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Really appreciate you taking the time out here in the busy time of the year for most of us with the end of semester looming. And well, tell us a little bit about how do you how you came to write about slavery in the Shenandoah Valley. Sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, it's it's a pleasure, and I appreciate the opportunity. So this is a this is a book really, um, and I, I know a lot of authors say this. You know, my book was in in, in the works for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. Really, as I, as I thought about this, this is something that really traces back to my days in grad school at Virginia Tech. Um, so when I was at Tech, so that was oh one oh three, um, I was researching Robert Milroy and emancipation in in Northern Shenandoah Valley, and so that's really when I first became hooked. On, on the African-American experience. And then like everything else, else, you know, life intervenes and other projects pull you in different directions. But really my, the, the research into African-Americans in the Shenandoah Valley uh, really started to, to tick up uh, in about 2011. So in 2011, um, I presented a paper at the Virginia Forum Conference, um, kind of looking at, you know, wartime experiences of enslaved people in the Shenandoah Valley. And then, you know, over the over the course of the next decade, presented papers on on different aspects of the story. And then I think there's two moments that really brought me to to the realization I needed to, to finish this this project. Uh, one came in early part of 2018. So early 2018, um, there was a group of, of students from Shenandoah University uh, I took to help map and document a long forgotten slave cemetery uh, just to the east of Middletown, Virginia. So Middletown sits about a dozen miles south of Winchester. And, and those, at, our viewers, Cedar Creek Battlefield is right. That would be taking place. And so as I was going through that, that project with my students, um, uh, you're kind of looking around at this cemetery. And, and for those, I mean, I'm certain a lot of people who are going to watch this have been to slave cemeteries, but they're very simple. You know, there's there's no markings on the stones. It's just a stone shoved in the into the ground, and it was it was hidden. It was tucked away in a body of woods. It was out in the middle of nowhere, and I thought this is really the story of, of this is a metaphor for African American history in the valley. It's it's been tucked away. It's been forgotten, and so that kind of you know prompted me to to finish this paper I was working on for the Society of Civil War Historians Conference um, that summer in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Presented it and. Um, after the conference was over, Randall Miller, who teaches at St. Joe's University and is the editor of Southern Descent series at University Press of Florida, along with Stan Harold, reached out to me and said, hey, is, you know, your paper looked great. Is there a book in here? Um, and so we started talking and submitted the proposal. And then, you know, that's how this that's how this book was born. But it's it's been a it's been a lot of years, you know, in the making with some detours along the way. But but really the past three years has, has really been the intense, you know, researching and writing and, and getting this thing to, uh, to publication. Yeah, that's, um, that's wonderful to in part hear that the 
there, you have that slave cemetery that you rediscovered. And it seems like having talked to um, the rangers at Cedar Creek in the past when we visited you too in, mm -hmm. in Winchester, it seems like there's a lot of sort of hidden, unexpected stories that Middletown has to offer um, historically, um, despite there being a major battlefield. Yeah, and there's and there have been, you know, other cemeteries that were discovered once the, the news broke about that one. And, mm. you know, we've been working on some some other projects as well.